This is the third and final audio cast in the Ventilator series. If you have not already listened to the first and second audio casts, where introduction of ventilators in various modes and settings are discussed, it might be a good idea to take a couple of minutes and listen to them. So now that you understand the purpose of ventilators, the indications for use, the benefits and risks, and you have somewhat of a background on the different modes and settings, let's talk about alarms. What happens when the vent alarms? What should you do? Who do you call? And what actions can you take immediately? When the ventilator is working properly, it delivers oxygenated air through the tubing to the patient. If an alarm occurs, this indicates that there is a problem with the pressure, volume, or rate of air being delivered. The first thing you want to do is always, always assess the patient first prior to troubleshooting the mechanical ventilator. If you have a respiratory therapist in the department or easily available, immediately notify them that the vent is alarming. You should also notify the ED physician or advanced practice provider. Know your hospital's policies and procedures so that you're familiar with your institution's guidelines. Let's break down why the ventilator alarms. Whether it's the patient or the machine, there are several reasons that cause mechanical ventilator alarms. There are high airway pressure alarms and low airway pressure alarms. There could be multiple reasons a vent alarms, but let's start with some of the more common high pressure causes. One of the more common causes of high pressure is kinked or blocked circuits or tubing. When an alarm sounds, the role of the nurse is to immediately check the patient's condition to assess the severity of the problem and determine the need for immediate resuscitation. If the patient is stable, the next step is to find the kinked or blocked tubing that's impacting the airflow. Ventilator or circuit problems can be easily distinguished from endotracheal tube or patient problems by disconnecting the patient from the ventilator and manually bagging the patient with a manual resuscitation bag, which should always be readily accessible. Of course, you're not going to do this alone. You'll need the respiratory therapist, another nurse, or physician to help bag while you assess the tubing and the circuit. The second common alarm issue is something causing high airway pressure alarms. High pressure alarms occur if the mechanical ventilator reaches the set limit or if the breath ends. So, what are some of these causes? Common causes of high airway pressure alarms include accumulation of mucus or other secretions in the patient's airway due to inadequate humidity. So you or the respiratory therapist will have to inline suction the patient. Another common cause is biting of the ET tube. This can be easily fixed by using a bite block or talking to the physician about adjusting the patient's sedation medication. Other causes include bronchospasm, coughing, gagging, or fighting the ventilator breath. Decreased respiratory system compliance due to a complication like a pneumothorax or decreased ventilation in the lungs. Sometimes, inappropriate settings might also cause a high-pressure alarm. For example, an excessive tidal volume or flow rate. Ventilator malfunction and water in the ventilator circuit or filter are also other causes of high-pressure alarms. Now, let's talk about low airway pressure alarms. Low pressure alarms occur if the pressure inside the breathing circuit falls below the set limit on the ventilator. The most common causes of low pressure alarms are the ET tube is disconnected from the ventilator circuit. The tracheostomy tube cuff is not well inflated. There could be poorly fitting tubes or prongs, loose circuit and tubing connections, or the patient requires higher level of air than the mechanical ventilator is delivering. Sometimes there are problems that cause both high and low rate alarms. High and low rate alarms can be caused by increases or decreases beyond the limits set for the alarm. A low rate alarm, or also known as apnea alarm, indicates that the patient has stopped breathing. This alarm is usually triggered by disconnected tubing. On the other hand, high rate alarm occurs when the patient experiences an increase in respiratory rate due to agitation or fatigue. 
Another type of alarm occurs when there are problems caused by high inspiratory volume alarms. High volume inspiratory alarms can be caused by several factors, like leaking or disconnected tubes, increased respiratory rate, or increased demand for air due to pain, anxiety, or improper ventilator settings. On the other hand, low volume inspiratory alarms may be caused by accumulation of mucus secretions, tube obstruction, or a lower respiratory rate. All of these causes of alarms will have to be addressed with your physician or advanced practice provider. Also, refer back to your hospital's policies and procedures. And remember, respiratory therapists are your best resource when it comes to ventilators. Reach out to them. Ask them to explain things to you and be sure to ask them plenty of questions so that you become more comfortable managing alarms. Good luck and be safe. Resources used to develop this audio cast include the American Association for Respiratory Care, Johns Hopkins Medicine, Merck Manuals, and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention.